Hi, my name is Kwang Binbei. In this video, I will present the work Estimating and Exploiting the Aleatoric Uncertainty in Surface Normal Estimation, which was done jointly with Ignis Budvitis and Roberto Cipolla. Given a single RGB image, our goal is to estimate the surface normal at each pixel. In this project, we focused on solving two limitations shared by the existing methods. The inability to estimate the aleatoric uncertainty and poor performance on small structures and near object boundaries. Here is the prediction made by our method. You can see that our method is able to estimate the uncertainty and that the prediction contains a higher level of detail where small objects and object boundaries are clearly visible. The aleatoric uncertainty captures the noise inherent in the data. So we first need to understand how the data is obtained. For most datasets, the ground truth surface normal is not measured directly, but is calculated from a depth map. The surface normal at each pixel is obtained by fitting a plane to its local neighborhood. If the size of the neighborhood is small, the result is highly sensitive to the noise in the depth map. For this reason, a large neighborhood size should be used. The resulting surface normal is then denoised using an algorithm such as total variance denoising. Using a large neighborhood size and denoising the calculated normal ensures that the ground truth is piecewise constant within large planar surfaces. However, at the same time, this makes the ground truth unreliable for small structures and plane boundaries. This means that the noise in the ground truth is not homogeneous. Therefore, the network should be able to learn such input-dependent aleatoric uncertainty. Another limitation shared by the existing methods is the lack of detail in the prediction. When you look at a prediction made by a state-of-the-art method, you can see that the network fails to reconstruct small objects and that the object boundaries are not clear. This is mainly because there is a bias in training. An indoor scene mainly consists of large planar surfaces like walls and floors, and small structures plus object boundaries with complex geometry. Therefore, if we apply the training loss on all pixels, the challenging pixels are underrepresented during training. The aim of this project was to solve these limitations. Our first goal was to estimate the aleatoric uncertainty. The next step was to improve the performance on small structures and near object boundaries by solving the bias in training. Firstly, in order to quantify the pixel-wise aleatoric uncertainty, we estimate the surface normal probability distribution and train the network by minimizing the negative log likelihood of the ground truth. When doing so, it is important to use a suitable parameterization for the distribution as it determines which quantity will be minimized during training. We start with the von Mises Fischer distribution, which has two parameters, mu and kappa. Mu is a three-dimensional unit vector that represents the mean direction, and kappa is the concentration parameter. Higher value of kappa means that the distribution is more concentrated towards the mean direction. As kappa goes to zero, the distribution becomes uniform. Here is the corresponding training loss. The loss minimizes the L2 distance between the predicted mean and the ground truth. Then, the loss is weighted by the estimated confidence kappa. Lastly, the remaining terms prevent the network from estimating infinite kappa for every pixel. So, it is an L2 loss with learned attenuation. However, we argue that instead of minimizing the L2, we should minimize the angular error. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, it makes the loss consistent with the error metric. Secondly, the angular loss is more robust against the asymmetric noise in the ground truth. Consider the pixels along this vertical line. The pixels have similar visual features and belong to the same plane. Ideally, the ground truth should be the same for all pixels so that the network can learn the mapping between the two. However, when we plot the distribution of ground truth, we can see that many of the pixels have incorrect ground truth. Such noise is caused by the neighboring pixels belonging to a different plane. And for this reason, the noise is generally asymmetric around the true normal. The red and the blue lines show the directions that minimize the L2 loss and the angular loss. We can see that the L2 loss, which is minimized at the mean, is sensitive to the asymmetric noise. Instead, 
the network should learn the median direction, which can be achieved by minimizing the angular error. We therefore introduce a variant of the von Mises Fischer distribution. Here are the probability density function and the corresponding training loss. Instead of minimizing the L2, we minimize the angular error. The loss is weighted by the confidence, and there is a regularization term. In other words, the network has two training objectives. Firstly, it will try to minimize the angular error. Secondly, it will increase the confidence for the pixels with low error. Let's see if it actually happens. Before training, the confidence is low for all pixels. As the training proceeds, the confidence is increased for large planar surfaces for which the prediction error is low. After training, the confidence is low for small structures. This is because the noise in the ground truth is especially high for those pixels. The same applies to object boundaries, where we see low confidence and high error. Lastly, since kappa represents the confidence, we calculate the expected value of the angular error and use it as a measure of uncertainty. So, we are now able to estimate the aleatory uncertainty. The remaining challenge is to improve the performance on small structures and near object boundaries. In fact, we could observe that training the network using the NLL loss often leads to worse performance on small structures. This is because our loss is weighted by the concentration parameter kappa. Since kappa is low for the challenging pixels, the bias in training becomes worse when we use the NLL loss. This table compares their quantitative performance. Since the network is not strongly penalized for making inaccurate predictions for the challenging pixels, the mean error and RMSE increase. So how can we solve this problem? A straightforward solution can be to apply the loss specifically on the challenging pixels. Since the training objective was to assign high uncertainty when it is difficult to reduce the error, the uncertainty is a perfect measure of how challenging a pixel is. Therefore, we will apply the training loss on a subset of pixels selected based on the uncertainty. Let's talk about the network architecture. Given the input image, we first extract multi-scale feature maps using a convolutional encoder-decoder. Then, the network makes an initial prediction in some coarse resolution, for which the training loss is applied to all pixels. Then, the coarse prediction and feature map are bilinearly upsampled by a factor of 2. Using this as an input, a pixel-wise multilayer perceptron estimates a refined, higher resolution output. During training, the inference is made only for a subset of pixels selected based on the uncertainty. We call this the uncertainty-guided sampling. The sampling procedure is straightforward. The number of pixels in the upsampled prediction is h times w and we will sample a certain proportion of those pixels. Firstly, we sample the pixels with the highest uncertainty. Then, we also add some uniformly sampled pixels to make sure that the low uncertainty pixels on large surfaces are also used during training. The training loss is computed only for the sampled pixels, and this process is repeated until reaching the desired resolution. Here are the predictions obtained by adding the pixel-wise MLPs and using the uncertainty-guided sampling. If we zoom in, we can see that the quality of prediction has improved especially on small structures. Quantitatively, both components lead to improvement in all metrics. So we can take the second box as well. Now let's look at some results. Here we train and test our method on NYU v2. Despite the poor quality of the ground truth, our method can recover the fine details of the scene geometry. If the quality of the ground truth is better, as in ScanNet, the level of detail in the prediction improves significantly. Compared to Tilted SN, our method shows better performance especially on small structures and near object boundaries. We can also see that the estimated uncertainty is high for such pixels. Here we demonstrate the generalization ability of our method. We trained the network on ScanNet and tested on Davis and Kitty. The results show that the network generalizes well for humans, animals, and cars, none of which were included in the training images. Quantitatively, we outperformed the state-of-the-art methods across all metrics. 
However, since these metrics only evaluate the accuracy of the predicted mean, we should also evaluate the significance of the estimated uncertainty. As we couldn't find other method for estimating the surface normal uncertainty, we compared our method against task-independent approaches. Specifically, we tried using test time dropout, test time augmentation, and both. When evaluated on all pixels, all methods perform similarly. However, as we remove the pixels with high uncertainty, our method gets significantly more accurate than the others. This suggests that the uncertainty estimated by our method correlates better with the prediction error. Here is a qualitative example. Each column shows the predicted normal, the uncertainty, and the prediction error of each method. We can now try removing the pixels with the highest uncertainty. For our method, the pixels on small structures and those near object boundaries are removed. And since those are the ones with high error, the remaining pixels are much more accurate than those remained by the other methods. To summarize, we estimated and evaluated the aleatoric uncertainty in CNN-based surface normal estimation. We also introduced the uncertainty guided sampling to solve the bias in training towards large planar surfaces. Lastly, our method shows state-of-the-art performance on both NYU v2 and ScanNet. We believe that surface normal uncertainty can be useful in a variety of computer vision tasks. Firstly, we can use it to improve depth estimation by enforcing the depth to normal consistency for the pixels with low uncertainty. Secondly, we can improve the robustness of surface normal guided depth completion by ignoring the pixels with high uncertainty. Lastly, since our method estimates the surface normal probability distribution, we can fuse the predictions made in different views. We hope you enjoyed the presentation. Here are the references, and thank you very much for watching.